<laughs> Those are the genetics we need up I here. know. Wow.
on the stand, so they're definitely up and moving today. So uh, this morning, came in, got in early, climbed up tall, about 30 feet up, so you could see this road right here. And all the deer were coming this way. There's some does just running around and stuff. So he comes in tailing a doe about 10 feet back and he's hot on her. And I see the doe and I see his right side and I'm like, shoot her. I'm like, okay, now get ready. And the doe is like looking off the other direction. They never knew I was there because I was so tall. He comes in about 20 yards and I, he's 20 yards away from me. And uh, I take the shot and he runs and drops right there. And uh, let's go check him out. A little bit on the heavy side. He's been eating his corn. But talking about a great deer. Oh, yeah. Golly bomb. That's an awesome deer. He's old. That is, oh, he's real old. He's just a good deer. He was, he was nosing a, a tree, or nosing a doe. He's right on her. What a giant. He's bigger than you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> His body is bigger than your body. I bet he'll go 220. I about to say, he's way over 200. I bet it, I bet it'll go 220. I'm going to say 220 right now. That's my guess. There's fresh deer food like right there. Dude. I was just I was sitting by the base of that tree since seven, and I've had about five deer around me. I saw you just come in. One. I videoed one, and then um, there was some back up off the hill when I was laying down there. And uh, you know I, that's the tree I was telling you about, right? The one I was on. That's the exact. That's the one I told you to okay, get. Okay, I thought you were on talking about that one. No, that one. But that that's a perfect spot. I don't know if I put a ladder stand on it, but I might hey, put a climber. You got that leave shrub it. tree? Yeah. And you get up there, tall enough. I was you facing that covers. way. Yeah. That was perfect. You can see off in the woods over here. Oh. Uh, this way. Here. I can't. Yeah. I, I can't. Two days. Second yeah. day, gun and season. And the best part about it is now I get three days to sleep in, catch up on the rest. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's the best part about God. it. Holy. What a he I mean, is a, he looks like a cow. Dude, he's a hoss. That is a hoss. Let's do one like this one. I'm laying down behind him. <laughs> Give it some.
So we were trying to figure out a plan for that afternoon and we had all this rain that had pushed through. Our wind was blowing from west to east so that spot that I was in that morning was really not going to be the best thing. Past experience hunting there has shown them that they really don't do any good if the wind's not right. So Justin was just kind of telling everybody, you know, we've taken time off, we've taken time away from family to be here. So, you know, we want to make sure that every time that we're going out there, we're going to try and be as efficient as we can. really strong wind coming out of the west so it's really not going to be very good for the spot that I was intending to go to the place I was at this morning but I'm going to try and go over at the pond and I'm going to start off there and probably still hunt into the woods a little ways and uh, see if I find any good sign and maybe uh, try and set up somewhere in there so should be good. We'll give it a try and see how we do. So let's hunt.
So I made my way to the end of the ridge where Ross had shot his buck that morning. And it's a pretty distinct change in elevation. You know, it's kind of a shelf where there's the end of the hardwood ridge and then it just kind of drops off into this huge field and it goes back towards the river. So I'd been sitting there for a little while and it was starting to get a little bit closer to dark. It seemed like the activity was starting to pick up. You could hear a lot more squirrels running around. Thought I could hear some deer. Never had seen a deer this whole time. But I was sitting on the edge of the ridge and I was trying to give myself the most coverage that I could right there. Behind me was where the drainage dropped down. I thought I could hear a deer back there and all of a sudden I heard a deer blow. So this deer blew behind me. I could hear her run off. It was basically like everything happened at once. So I can see through the trees about four or five deer that just start coming from the bottom, coming out of the woods and just kind of cutting across diagonally. And they're heading towards the swamp that goes and cuts back towards the river. sounded like from what Ross had said earlier was that this group of does is what that buck was chasing that morning. So I had a feeling that maybe, you know, if there's four or five does that are running across the field, there may be something chasing them. So at that point I decided I was going to try and get down the hill and try and get to where I could at least see if something came out because I wanted to try and utilize as much light as I could. You know, it was getting, getting pretty close to dark at this point. I tried to get down towards the bottom of the field. This way, basically I could look all the way down the ridge back towards the west. So I should have a pretty good view if something did come out of there. Well, it was getting to be about probably the last 15 or 20 minutes of light. And sure enough, I see this dark shape coming up out of the woods there. The way he was walking, I could tell it had to be a buck. I knew it was a big body. So where I was at, I had some sort of a small like sapling that was in my way, and I really just wasn't in a good position. By the time that I saw the steer coming out, you know. I wasn't set up, you know, I wasn't really sitting down, I was just kind of squatted. I'm looking at him through the binoculars and I can't really tell what his antlers look like. So I know that this camera picks up pretty good light. And I'm trying to film him, you know, I wanted to get a little bit of footage of him anyways, but I still can't really tell what he is. I'm trying to look at him through the scope. Um, you know, I got my binoculars hanging out of my case here. I mean, it's just making a total scene. He's cutting across the field and he's getting back towards where those does were. And so I know eventually he's going to get over here pretty close and I should be able to see what he is, but it's going to have to be a quick decision. So once he's getting over here closer, I can look at him through the scope and I get a little bit better look at his antlers, but you know, he's still facing broadside. So he gets over by the edge of the field there. And then at this point, that's when he turns. And when he turned, I could see it looked like he was outside his ears and looked like he had a pretty good rap. So at that point, I just had this thought of, I mean, it's now or never. So I flipped the tactic cam on, flipped the safety off, and I shoot. Well, I don't know if it was just my nerves or the tree that was in my way, but I missed him at probably 100 yards. And for whatever reason, he doesn't spook. It's like that first shot spins him around and then he's facing the other way. So then I try and calm myself down, follow up with a second shot. That one got me. 
ran in, into the field probably 30 yards, falls down. Well, we did it. I could not get my binoculars to focus. I could not get the camera to focus. I figured it would pick up better light. Finally looked at him through the scope. He turned his head and it looked like he was outside the ears. What's happening? Got a buck down. Good. But he's in in this field back here that Ross was sitting on. Sandy come out of the woods with the buggy so we can come get you. Okay. Is there a place is there a place to like cross this little ditch no, right here? No, you're just gonna have to green and bear it. Okay. It's the same all the way down. Yeah. Yeah. I may start walking your way on. Okay. Did you end up getting it on camera? Turned on the tack cam, so <laughs> there you go. So we'll see if it picked go. anything up. <laughs> The shot that you heard from me was a coon. Okay. And somehow I missed. <laughs> I can know. hit a deer six inches wide on a gap. <laughs> at 120 yards, but I can't hit a coon from, you know, 20. Yeah. That don't make no sense. So, well. I'm going to see if I can find a spot where I can get across here, I guess. Uh, hey, I might like to say I'm headed that way. Alright. Alright, we'll be good. Alright, bye. Thank you. Good job, okay, son. Yes, I oh, yeah. Look at that. I was right over there in the corner. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there were. Spot. There that's were. What I that's what I said. Yeah, today. that's what you had said. Um, but there were like. There were like four does that came out right over in there. Yep. And um, and I was back up in the woods a little ways, and so I came back, came on down to the edge, and um just sat there for a little bit and then that's when i saw him step out awesome. thank you nathan gets his first deer in kentucky <laughs> that's right. three right. long years of hunting man what, what a trip yep well you ought to have some video for <laughs> <laughs> you, ought to have, you ought to have plenty for the next the video yeah he's got a big old body like ross lay down next to that deer. yeah <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what this is. Dude, he is i love you want me dude he's got a big old body yeah, yep. I wonder off shot. I wonder he'll, he'll probably go 180, 190. 180, 190. <laughs> Daddy! What's it say? 185? 185. I was just so happy to finally get it done in Kentucky. You know, I had a couple of missed shot opportunities last year. I was really glad that I took the opportunity this time. Both me and Ross ended up taking a deer from the same little spot. Overall, it was a good trip, and everybody ended up getting a deer. Four of us got bucks. Justin ended up getting a doe. Yeah, it was a really good time. So, looking forward to get back there next year. We got the deer meat back home, and something I've always wanted to do was to try and make a carne asada type steak. Figured it was a good time to do it with this particular deer. And um, basically I've always had cube steak for the back strap and really just wanted to try out something new and, and kind of do a little experiment with cooking. So basically threw a few ingredients together and um, came up with a little carne asada marinade. Just let that sit for about an hour, threw it together and made some wraps out of it.
think that's gonna do it for this video. I'm gonna try and keep after them here in Alabama and um, hopefully we can make it happen here as well. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one.